All right, and welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time we'll be continuing the exploration of the phase locked loop module, the A196. Uh, last time we started this uh, segment of the demonstration of the low pass filter, uh, we were looking at the manual adjustment uh, via triggering notes into the PLL. Uh, this time around, I thought it would be useful to do a little bit of a demonstration of how different it is to use the CV input versus the manual adjustment of the low pass filter. Now, if we remember back to the basics, uh, we know already that the output of here is actually CVing than the VCO, but uh, we're going to be bypassing that by patching a signal into it. Uh, we're going to be using the A156 to generate this CV, um, and then we're going to be malting that signal via our malt, and then taking that over into our phase lock loop. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and hear what we're going to be working with this time around. Um, over at my A147, this is going to be generating a signal over here. Last time we did a sine wave, so I thought we'd change it up and do a triangle wave. So that triangle wave is going over here. It's generating CV, and then it's being adjusted so that, uh, for the most part, it's going to be in the positive uh, segment. Uh, so that way we can get some decent notes out of it, a nice smooth signal. Uh, that's going to be going out from the attenuator offset over into our dual quantizer. And then that is going to be output from here uh, into our malt. So let me go ahead and unpatch that so we can get that going. So we're patching down into the lower half of the malts. And then we're going to be taking one of those out. There we go. And we're going to be going into our VCO as we were before. So there we should be actually just triggering notes the way we were last time. Um, and let's take a listen to that before we move forward. So over here on the right, I already have my signals patched in. One of them, the gray one, is going to be from our A110, which is being uh, multiplied over here. If you look at the sine wave output, or yeah, that's right, sine wave output, going up over into our multiples. It's being copied twice. Uh, the first copy it's actually going into the A196 over here, as you can see. And then the gray cable is going over into our VCA right over there. So let's hear what that sounds like. There it is. And this was back kind of what we were using to do a little manual adjusting. So if you remember that. A little bit of the manual adjusting. But now let's hear what it's going to sound like if we go over here to our A160, or I'm sorry, A180 multiples and take a copy of that signal and go into the CVN of our A196. Now, I'm sure there's other ways you can generate CV and get them into the A196, but this is the type of demonstration that I choose to do. So here we go. And let's take a listen. So here comes our copy of our CV going over into the phase lock loop. And there we go. Fairly interesting sound. So let's try and adjust frequency. Not really having an effect, as we expect. So that's a little bit different. So now, why don't we try and go into Phase Comparator 2. Let's check out what kind of results we get over here. OK. 
Okay. Let's flip over to Face Comparator 1. Okay, so at this point, I don't really have to worry about adjusting the frequency here. I would only then choose which phase comparator I want to use. Personally, I like number three over there, getting those crazy little tones at the bottom, right there. But I've sort of taken this out of the equation now. Because my CV that's being generated over here at my A156 is actually responsible for the notes. So, less work versus more chaos. So, all right, now let's try the low setting over here and just see what kind of results we get with that. Slightly different timbre. Let's flip over into the high setting. That's where we were before. Slip over to mid. And this one's fairly interesting. At the very bottom, it kind of subsides, and then there's these kind of drones in the middle, and then it kind of goes up, and then the drones go away. Kind of like this one. Now let's flip over to Face Comparator 2. That's an interesting timbre right there, just because there you can really hear where the PLL is coming in and where it's going away. Just kind of get that little dead spot right there. And that's in the mid setting. We already heard high, so let's flip over to low. Yeah, I didn't imagine that we would actually get a lot of behavior from that one. Okay, let's flip over to phase comparator one. A little more droney. Okay, let's try over into the mid setting. I'm really liking that kind of like uh, sustained tone that appears towards the upper half of the sequence right there. So let's see if I can actually try to extend that. I'm going to bring down the frequency of my A147 and see if I can't get that to last a little bit longer. Of course, it's extending the whole sequence. Okay, that's fairly nice. Okay, so that's with the CV input going in there and then bypassing what's coming out of the low pass filter. So if I unpatch that and take this out, now I can go back to manually adjusting. Still some fairly interesting sounds to be found by manually adjusting. It's almost like a little scream or a howl there towards the end. Let's try it in the lower setting. 
Really interesting. Let's try uh, over in low setting of the VCO. Okay, let's flip it over to higher setting of the frequency. And we're just doing a little bit of review here and experimenting. Okay, so let's flip over to Phase Comparator 3. That's in the high setting, and then in the low setting. So, there you have it. Low pass filter, uh, completely being bypassed. CVN taking over the duties, so to speak. And definitely varied results with different uh, amounts of control over what is actually being produced, being produced via phase comparator out. Now in one, you have, you know, this is a control, and this is a control. So you can move this to adjust your timbre, but in the other, as we saw, as we patch that into CVN, this no longer becomes a factor that you have to worry about. Your level of control is a little more focused to face comparator type, and then of course, whatever notes you choose to trigger into your VCO. So, I hope that you found this useful. Uh, this is going to wrap up part two of our demonstration of the low pass filter section of the Dofer A196 phase lock loop. Uh, in the next couple of segments, we're going to be looking at some basic patches. Um, there's a basic patch on the A196 page that's, uh, I think it's a basic sequencing patch is the name of it. Um, and we might also be looking at a frequency multiplication patch as well as a couple of other patches uh, down the road. So again, keep on patching out there. Thank you very much for watching and please stay tuned.